Hey everybody, how's it going? So here we have a 2012 model MacBook Air. This is an 820-3209 board. Now we're going to be trying to figure out what's wrong with it. First thing we're going to do is we unplug the battery so we can see how much power the board is taking. And I plug it in. As you can see, it's taking 266 milliamps, even though there's nothing plugged in. Now one of the reasons that I have a power supply that I plug my MagSafe into is so that I can see how much power the board by itself is taking, because knowing how much power the board by itself is taking often allows me to solve problems that I wouldn't be able to solve otherwise. Almost every single time that it's taking 266 milliamps, the problem winds up being a shorter cap on PPBush G3 hot. Let's see if that's the case this time. So we're going to turn on the microscope camera, take a look over here. Now, I don't have the short cam, so I'm going to do what I call the OWIE test because they have that in the other room, and I don't have one in my room. So the OWI test is performed like this. So you're going to put your finger over the caps, and then eventually when you go over one of the... Ow! Okay, so that's the OWI test. So it does look like we have a short circuit on a cap in this area. Now, which cap is it? Well, that's an excellent question. We're going to find that out by putting a little bit of alcohol in that area and then turning it back on. So I'm going to unplug the power... Put, it, put some alcohol on each of these caps. There's nothing plugged in right now, so I don't have to worry about uh, my tweezers shorting anything. That shouldn't be shorted. All right, and then we're going to plug it in and see how much power is taken. All right. Where does it evaporate from first? This one right here. So that is the cap that was uh, causing the owie. So we do now is I'm going to turn on my soldering iron and fume extractor. Sometimes I like to call it a soldering iron. Just in case Dave Jones is watching. Make sure to pronounce the words properly. It's a soldering iron that we use to solder. And I'm gonna try and get this done without using my hot air rework station. Because I know there's people watching that can't afford a hot air rework station that only have a soldering iron. I'm going to show you how we get this done. Also going to be careful not to touch the lithium-ion battery cell right behind me. We don't want to have a unit pack power event, now do we? Okay. What's this? Come on. Ah, you're in sleep mode, aren't you? What magnification Barlow do you use? I don't use a Barlow. I hate Barlow lenses. I hate them. They make the image look stranger, and they require that I sit further away from the desk, and I'm short, so I can't do that. I'm 5'6". If I use a Barlow lens, then I would have to sit on a phone book. <laughs> I'm not a Barlow lens man. I never was and I never will be. I don't use Barlow. I am not a fan of Barlow. Don't Barlow me. As you can see, there's really no, no sign of liquid damage in this area whatsoever. So this was not caused by liquid. This is just a MacBook deciding that, a, you know, this little cap just woke up one day and said, I'm tired of being used for a MacBook. We're done with that. I'm not playing this cruel game anymore. And that little capacitor never again MacBooked. Never again. Now, if you'd like to replace a capacitor like that one, you can do something like this. We're going to try sliding it in. So I'm going to solder on one pad, like so. And then I am going to slide it in there, and then I'm going to solder the other side. This way I don't have to use hot air. So using hot air, not always the best thing to do. Of course, we check and see that we relieved our short. And the short is indeed relieved. Paul Daniels multimeter software is not showing that, but now it should. Indeed, the short is gone. Let's see, which side is the ground side here? The top is the ground side, and the bottom is the peepee -pee bus side. 
We're gonna remove a cap from a donor board and then we're gonna put it on this board. No big deal. It's the way we do. So I'm gonna use Okay, now watch this. Slide on. And on the other side. Make sure you touch the cap, the cap end as well as the board end. You don't want to just be touching the board pad or the cap side pad. You need to be touching both. So you have a nice sturdy connection there. And that's what we have, a nice little sturdy connection. Now, just going to wait a second for this little bugger to cool off a little bit. Once it cools off, let's give it a moment. You're going to see it turn on again. Now when I plug it in, it's not going to take 255 milliamps because it's being drawn into a short. It's going to take five to 600. This is an Ivy bridge, so probably closer to 600 and then it will work. And while I wait for it to cool down, I suppose I could show you what that little cap is for on the board view in the schematic. Paul saw that I got this board. Man, he'd be so mad. He'd be storming in my office right now. Probably with a BB gun. It's a good thing Paul didn't know. Paul doesn't know, can't hurt him. Okay, this is a really common problem on the old MacBook Air. So let's take a look. Schematic and board view. C7560. C7560 sits as a cap over here, and that sits between PPVIN SO CPU AXG and ground. But what is PPVIN SO CPU AXG? Well, let's take a look. What is that rail? Hmm. It's interesting. So it's called something different on the schematic than it is on the board view. Here it's called PPBus S5 High Side Computing. And you'll see that that is going to be... Oh, this is actually... They really did make this purposely confusing. Hmm. Okay, so PPVIN SO CPU AXG. That's this, which is this. PPBus S5, high side other computing iSense. There is a subrail of PPBus G3 hot. Paul Daniels' software doesn't allow me to select something else in the PDF. That's weird. So I'm right, right clicking doesn't do it. Left clicking doesn't do it. Damn you. This. Okay, well, huh. where is the current sense resistor that's going to sit there? Let's see, can I hit this? Can I hit find? Next, next, next. Previous. PPVIN underscore SO underscore CPU AXG. <laughs> okay, let's try you then.
Well, long story short, there's a current sense resistor that that's going to go through. PP bus is going to go through to become. See what's the what is this? Let's try you. PP vin. Oh, son of a bitch. That's the in. The in is PP vin. S5, other iSense R, but what does that come from? Oh, that's a subrel of PP by G3 hot. Okay. So PPVIN S5, eight high side, other iSense is what PPVIN SO, CPU, XG comes from. That comes from this, and this comes from this. So TLDR, that cap was between PP by G3 hot, our main power rail, and ground. It shorted to ground, and then it's uh, that, that is why our main power rail was not working. So it was supplying 255 milliamps to ground to a short. On the newer models, that typically blows the fuse. and the older one, it doesn't. As you can see, it does now turn on, it chimes, and it is a happy little MacBook now that it's no longer shorted to ground. i reboot this because I started it up while it was closed. Isn't the smartest thing to do for... As you can see, now it's going to turn on with a light. And it's a happy little MacBook. So that's about it for today. This is a really common problem on the old MacBook Airs. Very common. And uh, it really does make Paul mad when I get these in my queue instead of his. But I had two missing PM sleeps. And a board that someone refloated a CD3215 on. So I don't feel any bit of guilt about getting this. That's it for today. And as always, I hope that you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.